Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship service. Isn't it great to be back in the Lord's house again? Um, we'll follow the order of worship and a reminder that at the end of the service, uh, you will be ushered out. Um, so please don't all rush out at the same time. Um, we begin then by singing, Come Holy Ghost, Creator Black.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we confess Amen. before you that we are sinners, sinful, sinful by nature, nature sinful from birth, at times we fail to treat people justly and with mercy, and do not walk humbly in your sight. We do not consistently live a blessed life as we sometimes reject your wish. For this and all other sins, forgive us, we pray, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, send us the Holy Spirit, who cuts us to the heart with the Word of God, who opens our hearts to hear the message of your love, and who enters our hearts, that out of them may flow streams of living water. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. I'm not much of a singer, but it sure is nice to be here and be able to sing and have your voice drowned it out a little bit rather than with a TV. Our Old Testament lesson is from Numbers chapter 11. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70 men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down to the, in the cloud and spoke to them and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied. But they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other one named Medad. And the Spirit rested on them, and they were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, My Lord, Moses, stop them. And Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets? that the Lord would put his spirit on them, and Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament reading is from Acts beginning in chapter 1. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there, was, there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting and divided tongues as of fire appearing to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and to begin to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwellings in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at, the, the, and at this sound, the multitudes came together and they, we, they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all those who are speaking Galilean? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Praetia and Praetia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty work of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all those who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my word. For these men are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. 
But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last day, days, in the last days, it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions and the old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they will prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above the sign, signs of the earth, below blood and fire and vapors of smoke. The shun, sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive, for as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord of us. We join now as we confess our faith according to Luther's explanation of the third article. What do you believe and confess about the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord, or come to Him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the Gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth, and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins, and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise up me and all the dead, and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. Please be seated as we join in singing, O Holy Spirit, enter in.
God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text this morning is our second reading, the new one from the Acts chapter 2, the account of that Pentecost long ago. You know, no matter how often we read the Bible, no matter how familiar we might be with its message, it always has something new to teach us. Over the years, the account of that special Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 has taught me a lot of new things. One of the things that many people don't know about this festival of Pentecost is that although Pentecost is very special, it was not the first Pentecost. In fact, the Lord instituted Pentecost about the same time he instituted the Passover. Now, the Lord instituted Pentecost, um, which was originally called the Feast of Weeks. The Feast of Weeks comes 50 days after the Feast of First Fruits. So people began calling it Pentecost based on the Greek word for 50. Pentecost and the Feast of Weeks are the same festival, and so the Jews then had celebrated Pentecost ever since the days of Moses. So that's a long time. And if they do it every year, uh, they've celebrated it approximately 1,500 times already. Well, Pentecost is also one of the three feast days that requires uh, the people of Israel, the men of Israel, to present themselves at the temple. Uh, The law of Moses says, Three times a year all your males shall appear before the Lord your God at the place that he will choose, at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, at the Feast of Weeks, and at the Feast of Booths. Now, the Feast of Unleavened Bread is one week long, and it begins the day after Passover. The Feast of Weeks, or Pentecost, it comes 50 days after the Feast of First Fruits, um, which happens to be the first Sunday of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The Feast of Booths, well, uh, That doesn't quite fit in with Pentecost here today, but uh, it is also one of those feasts where they present themselves in the temple. So if we overlay these uh, festivals then over the life of Christ, we learn that Jesus died and was buried on Friday, because Thursday, remember, was the Passover, and on Thursday he was arrested, They had the Last Supper, he was arrested and then taken away, and on Friday uh, he was crucified. Um, So by the end of Friday, uh, which happens then to be the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the beginning, the first day of that feast, um, it was uh, the first day. Uh, The tomb remained sealed through Saturday, which was still the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Um, And then that would be the second day. And then uh, on the third day would begin the Feast of First Fruits because that's the first Sunday in the Feast of Unleavened Bread. (laughs) And uh, that's the day that Jesus rose, the third day. So on the third day he rose again, right, according to the scriptures. And he rose on the Feast of First Fruits. What a a perfect day for him to rise again, uh, the Feast of First Fruits, Jesus being the first fruits of those who died and rose again. Well, uh, now that we've got that figured out, um, let's also continue on. Forty days after uh, he rose from the dead, he ascended from death, uh, or ascended into heaven. Uh, We call that, of course, Ascension Day. Um, And then the Holy Spirit manifested himself in a special way according to Acts chapter 2 that we read just a minute ago. Um, And that is 50 days after Christ's resurrection or the Feast of Weeks or uh, that uh, day of Pentecost. So, faithful Israelites then would have followed the instructions of of God's law that he gave to Moses, and they would be in Jerusalem on those special days. 
That means then that the faithful would be in Jerusalem, um, presenting themselves in the temple according to the instruction given the law, where they would then be witnesses to Jesus' crucifixion and to Jesus' resurrection, and later, 50 days later, on Pentecost, they would then see the pouring out of the Holy Spirit. Now, in this way, the Holy Spirit used these special days to gather the Old Testament church together to hear about the mighty works of God. So God, the master strategist, had all these things worked out thousands of years before it even happened. We can tell because those festival days come from the days of Moses and all happened on those days exactly as planned. Now this brings us to something else that, that maybe you may not have realized for a while, but um, you know, I, as I was growing up in the church, I remember Pentecost and, and how exciting it, it always seemed with the Holy Spirit being, uh, the, the, as they say, poured out on us, and, um, and you hear the, the sound, the loud sound of the loud rushing wind, even though there was no wind. And then, of course, the tongues of fire separating above the, each of them, and you picture that tongue of fire or that like candle flame above their, above their heads, and, uh, and you can imagine that that's quite, quite amazing and quite a spectacle it must have been, right? And you think, well, how cool is that, that God would uh, send his Holy Spirit in such a way that all of us could recognize him um, and see this, and, and it's just... Uh, well, exciting. <laughs> um, but then when you get older, or as, at least as I got older and continued in my studying of Scripture, uh, I realized that this was not the first time that he poured out his Holy Spirit. It happened on the day that Jesus rose from the dead, that is, on the evening of that third day, the first day of the week, in fact. The doors were locked. The disciples were behind them for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. When he had said this, it says, He showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you as the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive any sins, they are forgiven. If you withhold the forg forgiveness from any, it is with hell. So we heard it, didn't we? That Jesus already gave his spirit. He breathed on them and gave the Holy Spirit to his disciples. And then I began to wonder, well, if Jesus gave them the Holy Spirit on that day, then why does he wait another 50 days and give it to him again. Wasn't it good enough the first time? Well, um, the Holy Spirit was given not just to Jesus for maybe we were distracted by all those marvelous sights and sounds that we heard. The tongues of fire, the, the mighty rushing wind, and the the miracle of speaking in other languages. The Holy Spirit was poured out on everyone who heard the gospel that day. All those who heard believed. He poured out the Holy Spirit on the entire Holy Christian Church and called them by the gospel, as we said before in the confession, and gathered them together, enlightening them with his gifts, sanctifying them in the one true faith. This miracle showed up in their response as they gathered together on that day. They came together. They were joined in one body. They heard the mighty works of God. They responded. Now when they heard this, it says they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Remember, uh, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, 
Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and they were added to them that day about 3,000 souls. And there's the great miracle of Pentecost. 3,000 souls that day. The Holy Spirit added 3,000 souls to his church after hearing the word of God. <clears throat> Pentecost is not just about the Holy Spirit poured out on the apostles. It's all about the Holy Spirit poured out on his church, on those 3,000 souls and all those who would come after him. In his explanation of the third article of the Apostles' Creed, we already spoke it. We heard Martin Luther as he wrote, well, the Holy Spirit calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. The Holy Spirit's manifestation on Pentecost is an example of just what Luther said. 1,500 years earlier, the Holy Spirit worked through Moses and his other servants uh, to establish feasts, um, to to give laws and gather these witnesses from the Old Testament church to Jerusalem uh, so that Luke the Evangelist could then write in his account, now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. Every nation under heaven. And it's not an accident that these men were in Jerusalem from every nation under heaven on that particular day. The Holy Spirit had called together the Old Testament church to tell them that the long-awaited Messiah had come in the person of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit was getting ready to convert the faithful of the Old Testament church into the faithful of the New Testament church. That's the reason for the supernatural signs described in today's reading. The Holy Spirit was gathering his church together so that they could hear the call of the gospel. The Holy Spirit uh, gathered those people of the Old Testament, and as they drew near and heard, they encountered people who would tell them who Jesus was and all that he had done for their salvation. These people didn't speak in the languages of academia, Greek, Hebrew, Latin, or not even in the common language of the streets of Jerusalem. Each one heard the story of salvation in his own native language. The language he learned from his mother and father in the home of his childhood. Each one heard his own language, in, the, in his own language, the mighty works of God. And all these amazing, amazing things were the Holy Spirit's means to accomplish the goal of gathering together the Old Testament church and telling her that her waiting was over, the New Testament has begun. Pentecost pilgrims and all other righteous people who gathered there on that day were looking forward to the Messiah. They'd been keeping the ceremonial laws. They'd been keeping the feasts, the sacrifices, and all the customs as a reminder of the day when the Messiah would come, when he would fulfill the law and offer himself up as a sacrifice to end all sacrifices. Their faith looked into the future, to the Messiah who was to come. And now the Holy Spirit gathered the church together to tell her that the Messiah had already come, that he had come in the person of Jesus of Nazareth, that Jesus was the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Christ, whom they've been waiting for. On this one particular Pentecost, the Holy Spirit gathered together the whole church on earth, calling them to faith in Jesus Christ by the gospel, enlightening them with his gifts and sanctifying them all, keeping them with Christ in the one true faith, forgiving them their sins, uniting them in the communion of saints, the one church of God, the holy Christian church. Even with all those great signs and wonders of the Pentecost, that special day, there were still those who resisted. There are men in the crowd who mocked and said, they're filled with new wine. In other words, that they were drunk. In any crowd, there's always going to be someone who resists the call of the gospel. Even today, when the gospel is proclaimed, many will reject it. That's just the nature of us sinful human beings. 
They may like all the stuff that goes on, the sounds of the mighty winds. They might like to see those flames of fire above their heads, uh, may hear the people speak in various languages. Um, and all that stuff is exciting, but we can become distracted by all of that. The goal is for, to create faith in the person and work of Jesus Christ, and we can become distracted. But on this case, as the gospel was preached and everyone heard the gospel of Jesus Christ in his own language, the Holy Spirit worked faith in their hearts, even as he continues to do today. That was the goal of the Spirit on Pentecost Day, long ago, that he would work faith in the hearts of his people. You know, on that special day of Pentecost, or the next day after that day of Pentecost, there was no sound of rushing wind. There were no tongues of fire. People spoke in their own languages, but not any foreign languages. The tongues of fire, as I said, already went away. However, the Spirit was still at work. If we were to continue reading in that second chapter of Acts, um, we would hear, and day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes. Can, can you imagine? Day by day, attending the temple. We're lucky we get here today, huh? Uh, one day out of, uh, from, uh, after being gone for several months, they were met every day and broke the bread. In other words, having communion and so forth, worshiping God. Um, day by day, Breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God, having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number, day by day, those who were being saved. You see, God's church was still growing. The Holy Spirit was still working through God's word as it continued to be preached to them. And the Holy Spirit continued to gather more and more people into his church. Even today, the Holy Spirit works through the Word of God. It has always been that way, that He works through the will of God, and it always will be that way. The true sign of the Holy Spirit at work is the proclamation of God's Word. Through the Word, the Holy Spirit points us to Jesus, who saved us from our sins by His suffering and death on the cross, and promises us life everlasting by His resurrection. The Holy Spirit works through God's Word when we hear it with our ears, when we read it with our eyes, when we experience that Word in the sacraments of baptism and the Lord's Supper. The Holy Spirit is at work when we confess our faith before each other, and when we confess our faith before those who do not even know Jesus. He continues to work through that gospel, creating and working faith and building His church. In today's second reading, the Holy Spirit called and gathered together the communion of saints to hear the proclamation that the Messiah that they had been waiting for had finally come in the person of Jesus of Nazareth and added to their number that very day. The Holy Spirit continues building the Holy Christian Church to this very day. He still calls us by the gospel and enlightens us with his gifts. He still sanctifies us and keeps us in the one true faith. And as he gives each of us new birth into the Holy Christian Church, so he also calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian Church on earth and keeps her in the one true faith, even unto life everlasting. For in this Christian Church, he daily and richly forgives all of our sins and the sins of all believers. And on the last day, he will raise us all up, along with all believers, and give to us eternal life in him. As Luther says, this is most certainly true. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Okay, at this time we will not collect the offering, but please... You make your offering on your way, if you didn't already, on your way in, on your way out. Um, and let us rise for prayer.
Almighty God, you have blessed us in love with the Savior, to whom the nations cry, and in whom is forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Grant to us your Holy Spirit, the Comforter, whom you have promised that we may all be called upon uh, in his name and be saved by him. Help us to treasure in our hearts your mercies and give to us fully, give our, and to give ourselves fully to your service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you delivered your word through Moses and the prophets and fulfilled your word in Christ. He was planted in death for our sins and raised for our justification. And in him shall all the nations of the earth be united. Give us pastors who will preach this word faithfully and church workers who are devoted to your service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised the thirsty will drink and from the empty will flow forth rivers of living water. Help us to show forth in holy lives the fruits of the Spirit and to live with love toward our neighbor. Give us a servant's heart that doesn't seek our own way but walks on the path of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to make one people from the many. Take from us all, uh, take from us all pride and prejudice and hate, that we may not hinder the cause of the gospel by our shame, but give welcome to all people in the name of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, have mercy and spare us. Put an end to the pandemic and restore the communities of the world to their common life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have given our nation the gift of heritage of, of, and of freedom. It came at the cost of many who lives on the battlefield far and near. Receive our thanks for their sacrifice and for all those who continue to serve our country. We give thanks not only for those who serve in the military, but also those who serve in the police departments and fire departments, all EMTs, all first responders, and all health care workers. Be with them and strengthen them and keep them safe through all that they do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you carry the burdens of our lives in your hands. Deliver from illness and suffering all who cry to you for release. Hear us on behalf of the sick, the dying, and those who mourn. Be especially with Nadine Petrovsky, Elizabeth Tonjes, Kathy Schultz, Jessica Soderblom, Brody Bledsoe, Jennifer Matthies, Kristen, Pearl Abrahams, Owen Fox, Betty Bettenhausen, and Vernell Wagner. Bless them and keep them always in your care. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, you have given us a good land and in heritage. Grant that we remember your generosity and constantly do your will. Bless our land with honest industry, truthful education, and an honorable way of life. Dear Lord, save us at this time from all violence going on around us, all the discord and confusion, from pride and arrogance, from every evil course of action, from hatred and from prejudice. Grant that we may come to the aid of many who are in need as we gather together as a nation of people who come from many countries and many different backgrounds. Support us all now in defending our liberties and give to those who have entrusted authority of government the spirit of wisdom, that there may be justice and peace in our land. When times are prosperous, may our hearts be thankful, and in troubled times do not let our trust in you fail. Through Jesus Christ, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, hear the people for the sake of him who loved us even to death and who lives to call to us to himself, all who have been saved. For you know that we need and you know what things we should ask for in your name. Grant them to us for the sake of our crucified, risen, and ascended Lord, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our hymn. And remember, after the hymn, you will be ushered out. <clears throat>